Uh, Dennis O'Rourke. Well, Mr Chairman, uh, New Zealand First supports all parts of the bill. However, we do have some concerns and reservations, especially in relation to the privacy of personal information. Yeah. Notwithstanding, however, the uh, important role of the Privacy Commissioner as set out in the bill. The important part uh, is, I think, Section 282B, which empowers the sharing of border information between what is called uh, accessing agencies and holding agencies. However, the only definition of accessing agency or holder agency is whatever is to be set out in the regulations, and we don't at this stage know what that would be. The new section 286A allows regulations to specify, and I quote, any agency or class of agencies as an accessing agency. So that uh, is very wide. It can include companies such as airport companies as well as government departments, port companies and so on. We don't really know how wide that is, so that's something of a concern for us. Nevertheless, New Zealand First does support the new provisions in the bill so far as they allow appropriate agencies to share border information. And uh, we accept that that will better and more efficiently and effectively allow those agencies to carry out their duties. Um, we think the provisions in the bill for those purposes are sensible and necessary and make good use of new technologies. The reservation we have, however, is that the provisions really contain no clear limitation on the types of agencies which can access the information and we think no adequate control on what the information may ultimately be used for. All this relies on ministerial discretion and on what ultimately goes into those regulations. So the concern in particular that we have is that information may reach the wrong hands and be misused, may be passed on to others, perhaps unofficially, and may not be shared for border security or related reasons. Now, I note that the, um, the Board of Airline Representatives of New Zealand did suggest a limitation uh, along the lines that uh, information sharing should be limited only to those agencies which have a border security function. And uh, that may be appropriate, but it may be a little too restrictive because there will be related functions that are important as well. But of more particular concern to me is that the accessing agency may access and use information for private commercial reasons. Now, to deal with this, what New Zealand First would have liked to have seen uh, in the bill uh, would be um, an addition... Uh, to section 286A 2C, which are matters to be considered by the Minister in respect of those regulations. And we would like to see something like whether the personal information accessed might be commercially sensitive or might confer a commercial advantage on the accessing agency. And there is nothing of that nature in the bill which we think is something of a disappointment because it does impinge, we think, on that principle of private personal information requiring adequate protection. I also note that the report of the Justice and Electoral Committee refers to Section 286A1E, which refers to regulations made for border information sharing, which may prescribe, quote, the conditions under which an accessing agency may access border information. But this differs from the committee's advice, which says, quote, provide a means for government agencies to place controls on the way information provided to commercial interests could be used. So the new section uh, 286A1E does not do this. It does not provide a means for the holder agencies to place controls on, the, on use for commercial purposes. It only allows regulations by way of order and council to prescribe conditions under which accessing agencies can gain access. So it's uncertain if that provision would be effective to control use for commercial purposes.
There is certainly no way, Mr Chairman, no way for a holder agency to Order. control use for those Are purposes. Are you seeking another call? Mr Chairman, I am. Right. Dennis Again, the broadness of the amendments allowing access and the lack of specific controls on the use for commercial purposes are a concern for New Zealand First. There was a need, we think, for Section 286A1E to be further tightened up in the ways which I have mentioned. I'd like to turn now to the new provisions relating to biofuels. Again, New Zealand First supports the amendments, especially to Section 742C. Uh, which exempts home production of biofuels and biofuel blends from licensing requirements, if for personal use, if not for sale, and if manufactured on land on which the manufacturer's house is located. And the amendment also exempts home-produced biofuels from excise duty, which we also think is appropriate, consistent with exemptions for home-produced tobacco and alcohol. However, I do have a concern about the amendment to Section 2 relating to the definition of biofuel. This refers to fuel production from biomass, but there is no definition of biomass, so that there is a risk that fossil fuels could be included as a fuel produced from biomass, thus defeating the meaning of the Act in relation to exemptions for biofuels. The dictionaries are of no assistance on the term biomass, they refer to biomass as, quote, organic matter that can be converted into fuel. So that could uh, let fossil fuels in, we think. However, if we look a little bit wider, for example, at Wikipedia, it says, biofuel is a type of fuel whose energy is derived from biological carbon fixation. Biofuels include fuels derived from biomass conversion as well as solid biomass, liquid fuels and various biogases. Although fossil fuels have their origin in ancient carbon fixation, they are not considered biofuels by the generally accepted definition because they contain carbon that has been out of the carbon cycle for a very long time. So for that reason, I think the definition is, as it is uh, will just survive um, and be workable. However, it would have been preferable to see a better definition in the bill. With those re uh, reservations, Mr Chairman, New Zealand First will support the bill as it is. Uh, point of order, Honourable Damien O'Connor. I hate to interrupt my colleague, Mr Mallard. I, I, it's not my style. Um, could, I just seek leave to table a letter received in my office on the 14th of February, dated the 4th of January sent to the Minister for Primary Industry, um, claiming that... No, that, that, that's that enough. I'll put, I'll put the leave. Staff, that I'll if you have leave. a New Zealand and Australian passport, you can virtually bring anything into right this country. Right. I'll put the leave. Leave us up for the tabling of that document. Is anyone opposed to that course yeah. of action? Yes. There is. Is, a, is any member seeking... No, look... Leave, you know the rules. Leave was put, leave was refused. Does any member seeking the call? Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm just sort of flabbergasted by the... Uh...